Hello and welcome to the second video of V2X Communication Explained video series. Previously, we spoke of V2X Communication Introduction and today we will learn why V2X or Vehicle to Everything Communication is really needed. I am Tamur. I have a PhD in Radio Systems and over 10 years of experience from the automotive and telecom industry. I highly recommend if you haven't watched the earlier videos about V2X, then follow the link below so you can quickly get to the same level and up to the speed. When we speak of a smart car, we know there can be tens of sensors on the car. It can be between 20 or 30 sensors to get 360 degree view of the surrounding. For example, ultrasound sensors of, for the park assist and near field sensing which are widely available in many cars today. There can be more advanced sensors, for example, imaging sensors or cameras for object recognition and lane markings. Then we have radars, both long range and short range radars to detect objects that are in the front of the car, behind, sideways or in the blind spots. We use LiDAR to construct a detailed image of the surrounding. An input from all these sensors is combined in a sensor fusion node that is located somewhere in the car to process the data and construct this 360 degree view of the car surrounding. Now, this is not all we have. We could have many more sensors like infrared sensors or tire pressure monitor or weather sensors and all these have some purpose and they, they are acting all together and this information is combined as I said in the sensor fusion node and this makes a car a smart car having all these sensors on the car today it would be natural to ask why do we need V2X or wireless communication as an additional sensor I think it is very simple to answer these sensors that are available on the car today or onboard sensor excluding the wireless communication sensor they can only see in the direct or visible line of sight which is one of the limitation of these sensors and v2x complements it very well by serving as a mouth and ears to the car so the cars can talk to each other and other objects that are not only visible but also in the uh, non line of sight to the car So in the future videos, I will explain the details of each of these sensors, how they work together for autonomous driving and link will be available in the description below. We just spoke of many sensors on the car, giving 360 degree view of the surrounding and V2X on top of it providing visibility beyond line of sight by making cars to talk to each other and listen to each other. But what does it really change? Why it matters? Let's talk about it, that how V2X is really going to make a significant contribution towards safety, efficiency, and comfort. We begin with on-road safety. Global status report published in 2019 by World Health Organization summarized that the road traffic fatalities is a major public health problem. Road accidents are the highest fatality cause per 100,000 population among children and young adults, mainly between 5 and 29 years of age. And problem is severe in mid and low income countries. We have vulnerable road users that include pedestrians, cyclists, disabled and two wheelers. They account for 50% of all road deaths. And if no action is taken now, situation will get worse by 2030. We can see that we have about 1.35 million deaths and about 50 millions are injured annually. And if we translate it roughly to per hour, we can say that it's about 150 people dying each hour on the road due to some road accidents. In February 2020, third global ministerial conference was held in Stockholm, Sweden. And the main agenda was road safety. They signed a declaration 
to take actions to reduce this number to half between 2020 and 2030. So during this third global ministerial conference, the academic expert group proposed nine recommendations on road safety strategy for the period 2020 and 2030. And this includes children health, upgraded infrastructure, safe vehicle across the globe, sustainable practices and reporting, zero speeding, technology, model shape, public procurement, and speed limit down to 30 kilometers in uh, risk areas. We review each of these one by one, starting with the children health. So first recommendation is about children health. Children do not get similar physical activities at pe as people used to get in the past. They need help for, from elders because roads are much more crowded and traffic in many countries is not child friendly. The traffic is too much, transportation means are not sufficient and road safety is poor for them to be independent and feel safe uh, when living in the cities. So we aim to improve situation for children's safety and well-being. The second recommendation is uh, about upgrading infrastructure. A lot of road infrastructure is either outdated or not in place to meet the demands of modern day traffic. We do not speak of expensive or fancy infrastructure, but the, the needed one, so that it can be made available everywhere for everyone at a low cost. It will make street crossing and cycling tracks safer than ever before. And when we look at all these aspects, either it's the children health or upgraded infrastructure, we see that somehow technology and connectivity is involved. And I will explain later how. Third one is safe vehicles across, across the globe. We know there are millions of vehicles produced each year, ranging from two wheelers to lorries and trucks. All of them must be made safe as much as possible. They must be able to deliver some or more than the basic regulations. We need to encourage the vehicle manufacturer and fleet managers to introduce safety as core functionality and adopt as widely as possible. As a fourth recommendation from the expert group, we have sustainable practices and reporting. Better sustainable practices need to be adopted and reporting mechanisms need to be considered. We need to introduce new matrices that include traffic safety as a basic in indicator because this is something that we lack today. The fifth recommendation from academic expert group is about zero speeding, which is quite interesting. And you must be wondering what do we mean here by zero speeding. So let me explain like this. We know that police enforcement for speeding are very important. They have been effective to some extent, that we all know. But in some major areas, we know that traffic is related to big organizations that can be city government or a big industry who own the fleet. And they must not be monitored or they should not need it to be policed. How we can achieve this? We can achieve this by some kind of constant monitoring over the air, through the wireless links, on the cellular network, and that is where V2X plays a major role. And the aim here is that all these fleets should not be speeding, no matter where they are driven around the globe. So the sixth one is quite obvious one, the technology, because we know the technology is one of the key enablers to achieve these benefits. We don't speak of some autonomous cars that they should all be upgraded to be the autonomous cars, but something that is really readily available, something that is cheaper and could be used on a large scale, such as connectivity. It has potential to bring major improvement for all of these areas. So the seventh recommendation from the expert group is about model shift. Model shift is 
very much needed to reduce harmful emission, improve air quality, and adopt better energy resources. So, the eighth recommendation from the academic expert group is about public procurement. And public procurement is about 20% of global economy, which is of course enormous buying power where government can improve road safety situation if the part of this money is spent to improve the, the road safety and the infrastructure that is installed across the, the highways or in the urban city uh, areas, we can significantly improve the, the traffic situation and road safety as compared to today. Last but not least, so the ninth recommendation is one of the most interesting one, where they have recommended to reduce uh, the speed down to 30 km per hour. So 30 km per hour should be the max real speed limit in the downtown urban areas where we have the high risk of collision. So that we can have real speed where we could mix uh, the vulnerable road users, motorized vehicles in very safely. So it, it will not only make roads safer, but of course it will make them greener where renewable energy resources could be utilized. So this is this is quite interesting to see that the proposal is to reduce these uh, speeds in the city area down to 30 km per hour. So here we have seen that we, we have nine recommendations from the academic expert group and all of these are directly or indirectly related to the technology and connectivity because somehow we need a mechanism to monitor or constantly monitor uh, these uh, matrices and there V2X plays a very significant role to improve the road safety and make the roads much safer and reduce the deaths on the road. Another aspect where V2X can significantly improve is the efficiency. How? So when we speak of the busy traffic in huge cities, there one of the most concerning element is time to commute to and from work. So here I have an example for you. Assume a person who is commuting to and from work five days a week for about 50 weeks per year. How much time it would be if we have this uh, as an accumulative time over the year? So take an example. If it is 15 minutes one way, then it is in a, in a, in a year, it is typically 5.2 days per year. If a person is commuting to and from work 45 minutes one way, then it will be 15.6 days in a year. And if it is 90 minutes one way, then it will be 31.3 days in a year. Basically, we lose a whole month just commuting to and from work. And this is not so favorable situation. And we all know this is very common and typical in large cities nowadays. So here we see a potential where technology can improve the situation. If the technology becomes coordinated by B2X, like cars are communicating with each other, we could reduce the traffic jams. Where the cars are coordinated, uh, the routes are better planned, the cars do not get into the rush, and they are rerouted based on the traffic situation in one area and less traffic in another area. So, even if it is reduction in 15 minutes of one way commuting, we will save five days per year. And more we go uh, down to saving time up down to let's say 30 minutes, we will save 10 days, which is quite a lot of time. Another aspect that cannot be ignored is comfort and productivity. Imagine the situation where you are a frequent traveler. You have to commute long distances or either you pass through busy city traffic each day. 
then it would be great if you could convert this driving time into productive hours. How you could do that? If your car is semi or fully autonomous car and you have state of the art V2X connectivity, you can enjoy the, the infotainment services. You could take a nap, you could read a book, or you can just play games. Because we know V2X offers connectivity so you could work as well as be entertained while you are driving. So why V2X is needed? We can summarize our discussion by saying that V2X has a potential to offer improved road safety, enhanced efficiency and comfort to the driver. Hopefully. You have enjoyed watching this video. To follow all the videos on V2X, watch this playlist. To watch the latest video, you may press this link here. Hit the subscribe button if you would like to be notified as soon as new video is uploaded, then you press the bell icon. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you soon.